Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial we are going to be vectorizing some hand-drawn doodles that were just created on regular old copy paper. This tutorial is brought to you by Monica and Whitney who both emailed me this week asking for a tutorial on uh, creating vectors from doodles that they had made to put on any kind of application that you want. And just a heads up, this is a long process. It's not difficult, but it is very tedious because you wanna get in there and you wanna clean every little bit, especially if you ever decide to sell your doodles. Um, you know, you want to make sure people are getting their, their money's worth, so the effort is definitely worth it. So this is my most recent pack, and I'm going to show you how I took uh, some of the vectors that were part of this pack and how I started from the doodle and worked my way all the way to the finished result, which you see on screen. So let's just hop right into this. We're going to go into Photoshop first. Uh, one thing I want to mention is in this tutorial, I'm going to show you three methods on how to vectorize, and they're going to increase in difficulty as we go along. So um, no matter what your skill level is, whether you're a beginner or you're more advanced in knowing the pen tool really well, um, there's something for you. So I'm just going to hop into Photoshop. So this is how those doodles began. Um, this is a portion of those. And just scanned in on my regular home scanner at 600 ppi you don't need to go that high 300 is absolutely fine uh, you can buy the pass this step entirely if you have a smartphone and uh, you want to buy this app called scanner pro i think it's two dollars um, it eliminates all the steps that we're going to do in photoshop so if you don't have photoshop or you just don't want to take the time to do this part in photoshop it's really awesome you just take a picture of your doodles and then it automatically increases your contrast and then you can email that picture or or airdrop it to yourself and then you can work with it from there in illustrator okay so the first thing we're going to do when we're in photoshop is we're going to come over here into this adjustments panel and you can get to it by going window adjustments and it'll pop up and the first thing i usually do is i come over here to levels and when you're in the levels palette the closer this little black node gets to the gray node, the darker your darks get, and the closer this white node gets to your gray node, the lighter the lights get. So I'm just gonna show you if I drag this black one, my darks are getting darker. If I drag the white one, my lights are getting lighter. So that looks really good actually. Um, I typically go into brightness contrast, which I will also do. I don't think it's necessary for this one, but I'll show you the settings I usually use. So if, that, if those settings aren't enough for you for contrast wise, uh, add in a brightness contrast adjustment. I always bring my contrast all the way up and then I bring my dark, my brightness back a little bit just to make my darks a little darker. Okay, so I'm gonna make a layer for my background and all you have to do to do that is double click on your background layer and hit okay. And now I'm gonna group all of these together. So I'm gonna hold shift, click on the top layer and then hit command G or control G on a PC to group them. And now we need to make a copy of this group because we're gonna merge the group. And if we ever wanna go back and make adjustments to those adjustment layers, uh, we wanna be able to have those available to us and they wouldn't be available um, once we merge the group. So I'm just gonna hold Alt, click on the layer and just drag it down, turn it off because we don't need it right now, come up to this first group, right click and choose merge group. Okay, so now we're just gonna hit Command A or Control A on a PC to select everything and then to copy it I'm going to hit command C or control C on a PC. Now I'm going to hop over into Illustrator and I'm just going to paste everything next to the completed vectors and I'm going to hit command V or control V to paste it in. Okay so the next thing we need to do is come over here to image trace. I always start with the default trace and then I adjust from there when I'm working with doodles. Uh, with other things obviously the case is different but for doodles I come to default and then from there I can make adjustments so I'm going to hit OK and we're just going to zoom in here to see what this looks like and you can see there's a little so there's some rough edges in here but it's actually not terrible uh, it's definitely workable if you want to you know edit things a little further you can click this panel open uh, there's an advanced toggle if you want to mess with your paths corners or noise I usually just stick with threshold the higher the threshold gets um, the thicker typically your um, your doodles become but the smoother they become too so you can see sometimes they get a little too thick for me so I like keeping it a little closer to the default setting. So that looks pretty good to me. So we're just gonna roll with this. Uh, I've gotten a lot of comments before about clicking ignore white right here and I'll I'll explain in a second why I don't do that. So I'm gonna click 
close this and hit expand. And then I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And you, whenever you uh, use Live Trace, it groups everything together. And I typically have to ungroup everything twice just to make sure everything's ungrouped. So you can ungroup by hitting Command Shift G or Control Shift G if you're on a PC, and then just hit it twice. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit Y on my keyboard as my little uh, magic wand, and I'm just gonna click anywhere there's white. So I'm gonna click there and then I'm gonna delete. So the reason why I don't click the ignore white in the tracing panel is uh, when you do that, it removes the white, but it leaves the paths that the white was contained in. So I have extra paths throughout my artwork and that is usually a bigger pain in the butt than just doing it this way. So this is a lot quicker for me personally. Uh, so that's why I do that. Okay, just wanted to say there was a point to it. All right, so we're gonna grab this little doodle up here because it will be a lot easier to go through the three different methods uh, together with. So I'm just gonna copy it. I'm gonna hold Alt to bring it over here and make a copy. Then I'm gonna rotate it so it looks a little easier to work with. And then I'm gonna hold Alt, make another copy, Alt and make another copy so I can talk about the three methods. Okay, so this first method is really good if you're new to Illustrator and you're just kind of getting the hang of things. Uh, you can still clean up a hand-drawn doodle very easily using your pencil tool and uh, something called the smooth tool. So I'm going to hit V on my keyboard and this activates my selection tool and I'm just going to choose the shape that I want to clean up. So as you can see, if I zoom in here, it's got this really ugly point and then this edge is a little funky. So if you have a Wacom tablet, I have one in front of me, so that's what I'm gonna use. Um, or if you have a very steady hand on your mouse, that also works fine. Uh, I'm gonna hit N on my keyboard, and this activates my pencil tool, and I've got my Wacom right now. And I can just kind of um, correct areas that I don't find uh, visually appealing from what the live trace did. So I'm gonna curve this bottom, whoops, curve this bottom part out, and then maybe clean up this top area a little bit more okay so as you can see I've got quite a few points and whenever you're dealing with uh, the pencil tool or points in general the fewer points your shape has the cleaner it's gonna look and we still want that hand-drawn aesthetic but we want it to be clean we don't want it to look too rough like we didn't put any effort into cleaning this up so in order to reduce the amount of points and kind of smooth some of the rougher areas out and come over here and just toggle down the pencil tool and select smooth tool and you're going to use it exactly like you would use the pencil tool you're just going to draw along the path and when you do that you can see it reduces the number of points that were on that path so it definitely cleans it up quite a bit Let's see if we can get rid of one of these and probably some of these all right that wants to stay that way okay so I would just go through each of these the same way, hit N on my keyboard, use the pencil tool to clean up problem areas, and then come over here with my smooth tool and smooth out those points. So I reduce the number of points and I get a much cleaner shape. Okay, so that's method number one. Method number two is integrating the pen tool into all this. So I'm gonna set my Wacom aside and I'm gonna go back to my mouse for this part. So I'm gonna select the shape that I wanna fix and I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard, so this is my pen tool. Actually, I need the, you can use the pen tool right here, or you can hit just the hyphen key, and this is your delete anchor point tool, so it doesn't add any points, we're just deleting points with this tool. So I'm gonna click all these points that I don't want anymore, and then I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard and grab the handle that I want, and kind of adjust it out, and just, if you have um, decent knowledge of the pen tool, you don't need to be an expert. Uh, but this is a nice method, uh, a little more advanced, but it does definitely make your shapes much cleaner than if you're just using the pencil tool. So this is kind of taking the live trace as your base and then working on top of it to um, clean it up that much more. So this is method number two. Um, let me just do this one too so you can see one more example of it really quickly. Let me get rid of all the points that I don't need at once so I can move a little faster. Okay, so it looks really terrible right now, but we can easily 
kind of fix this to look more like it once did. And see, we've got our kind of base points to work off of. Make this a curved bottom part. Okay, so one thing to talk about. Whenever you use Live Trace, sometimes it kind of funkifies your handles. And what I mean by that is if I grab one handle, it's not reliant on wherever this handle is. And whenever you have a situation like this, your paths are not as smooth as they could be. So I think this one will do it too. Nope. So see how when I move the top handle, the bottom handle moves with it? That means wherever I drag this, this is going to be a smoother transition than this will be. So even though I try and line things up, chances are it's still going to look a little jaggy right there. So I can avoid that entirely by redrawing my handles out. And you can do that with a tool called the Convert Anchor Point tool. It's found um, right under your pen right here, and the keyboard shortcut is Shift-C. So if you hit Shift-C, and you click and you drag out, you can drag out new handles. And then if you hit A on your keyboard and you wanna drag your handle back in, see how the bottom handle moves with it now? So now I'm gonna have a nice smooth transi transition right here because both handles are reliant on the other's location. If you ever get into a point where you need them to be separate, you can go back to what we had previously by hitting Shift C. And once you drag out your new handles, while you still have the convert anchor point tool active, if you click on one of those handles, then you can go back to the way you were before. And if I hit A, you can see if I drag this one, this other handle doesn't move anywhere. So that's a little tip for working with your points. If things get a little funky, I would just say redraw your handles and then go from there. Okay, so that's method number two. Number three, the last one, is all about drawing everything from scratch using your pen tool, but looking at your original shape as a base. So technically you wouldn't have to live trace everything if you're gonna redraw everything using the pen tool, but I do like having that extra bit of contrast. Um, so with the black and the white, I can see very, very clearly where my edges are instead of any darkness in my paper getting involved. So that's why I like doing it anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter so I can draw right on top of it. And in order for me to do that, I'm gonna put it on its own layer. Um, so this is my artwork layer. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna grab this little blue node, drag it up to my second layer, drag the second layer below my first layer because my first layer contains my artwork. So I'm gonna lock the second layer so I can't move this. And I'm gonna click on my first layer since that's the one I'm drawing on. I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard, but I'm gonna make sure, let me grab a nice color so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so if I come in here, I can just click and I can very quickly draw out my shape, but now I've got a nice little base to work with. Just close that off, draw another one. Oh, if your top handle gets like, really crazy long and you want to bring it in if you hold alt you can bring it down and that will make it not so huge okay last one okay so if you get these really daggery points and they bug you as much as they bug me if you come over here to your stroke palette uh, you can get to stroke by going window stroke and you just choose rounded cap and rounded corner whoops make sure this one's selected too rounded cap and rounded corner that makes it a lot easier to look at let's turn off that bottom layer so we can see what we have so these look pretty good um, and you can fill them in just by selecting them and toggling this little arrow so now they're filled and if you want to match them a little closer to what we had over here, see how we've got the softness with the point instead of these being super pointy, uh, you can make a softer point by hitting A on your keyboard. Um, and as you can see, like we've got two handles right here and we need these handles to be right here instead of this way. So we're going to redraw our handles using that um, convert anchor point tool. So I'm going to hit shift C for the keyboard shortcut and I'm gonna drag out new handles. Make sure you drag them in the right direction so you don't get any overlapping, so you don't do this. So I'm gonna drag it out and once you do that, you'll see things get 
kind of fat. So I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard. I'm gonna adjust this handle so it comes a little lower. And then I'm gonna just bring these handles in a little closer. As long as you have handles that kind of look like this when you have two pads converging, your, um, your point will always be much softer and rounder. So that's a little closer to the original. And it's a very clean shape. Um, it's still got characteristics, still has characteristics of your original doodle, but it's much, much cleaner. So that's how to make a super, super clean doodle um, off of a base doodle that you drew by hand. So those are three methods for vectorizing doodles in Illustrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. For more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies, be sure to head over to my blog, every-tuesday.com. And if you're like Whitney and Monica and have any questions, uh, if you are looking for how to do something and can't seem to find it, definitely send me an email over on my blog and I will get back to you as soon as possible and I will see what I can do to help. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.